Two Palm Springs police officers trying to resolve a family dispute, dispute were killed Saturday when a man they had been speaking with suddenly pulled out a gun and, and opened fire on them. Reporter Tony Shin has the story. At Desert Regional Medical Center, fellow officers salute in respect for a brother and a sister who made the ultimate sacrifice, a tremendous loss that brings tears of anguish to those who wear the badge. It's just very emotional. It just, it just hurts. It's very, very sad. So many people feel that deep sadness, which is why many of them line the streets, waiting for the two officers to take a final patrol in the desert city they served and protected. And it's when it's in your own town. Yeah, it's hard. Officer Jose Gilbert Vega was a 35-year veteran who was about two months away from retirement, a time to spend with his wife and eight children. The 63-year-old officer who friends called Gil was working overtime on his day off. Those who knew him say it was a sign that he truly loved his job. Just a real genuine uh, nice guy, you know, and, and, and he was always there to help. People respected him. People loved him in the community. It's kind of tough, you know. I felt really sad for him, for his family, for Leslie's family. Officer Leslie Zarebny just started her career at Palm Springs PD. At 27 years old, she had been on the force for about a year and a half. She recently returned to duty after giving birth to a baby girl four months ago. It's unbelievable that she won't be going home. As the families of both officers mourn, this community will not let them mourn alone. We're thankful for everything they're doing for us. Thank you. John Felix, a known gang member, member according to Palm Springs Police, was arrested and will face charges for the death of the two police officers. Torrential rain from Hurricane Matthew is causing widespread flooding and devastation in North Carolina. Hundreds have been rescued from the rising water, and at least eight people are dead. Five others are missing, and the flooding is expected to continue for days. NBC's Jay Gray has this story. The storm is past, but the misery is not. Overnight, there were more than 800 swift water rescues in North Carolina as people were caught off guard by the rising water. Uh, our state is facing major destruction and sadly loss of life. Uh, this storm is not over for North Carolina. Flood victims desperate to escape were pulled from rooftops, others from the roofs of their cars, including this mother and toddler. Some of the most significant damage from Matthew was in the coastal plains of North Carolina, where flood water swallowed entire neighborhoods. The devastation for Matthew stretches across five states after almost three days of battering the southeast coast. A state of emergency remains in effect in 43 North Carolina counties. But I have never seen anything like this. And the water got all the way up to my top step, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then it just it stopped. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of thousands forced from their homes and communities that are still underwater right now. Jay Gray, NBC News, Red Springs, North Carolina. Turning to sports now. It's been a uh, tough weekend for the NDSU football team, a bittersweet weekend as we've learned of the loss of one of their own. We'll have that. Coach Kleiman, some comments from him next in sports.